Okay, this week we're making Alvin's Drunken Chicken 2.0. Now it's called 2.0 because this is his second iteration of his Drunken Chicken. Now last time he made this, there was actually a shortage of Shelsing wine in Australia. Craziness. Now when I went to the Asian store, it just so happened that I asked for some Shelsing wine and they didn't actually have any. And I'm living in Austria. I'm not sure if this is a coincidence or, you know, his reach is that far. But the laddie at the, at the store assured me that this here, I'm not actually sure what it is. The bits that I can read just says it's a Chinese cooking wine. And she said it tastes very, very similar or pretty much the same thing in her words as Shaoxing wine. So yeah, that's what I'll be using instead. Now he also uses a specific palm sugar called Gula Malacca. I hope I pronounced that right. Now, that's a specific species of palm tree. I'm not sure if this is it or not. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it's not, but this is the only one that I could source. So I'll be using this palm sugar. Okay, the recipe calls for chicken breast with the skin on. Now I couldn't find any chicken breast with the skin on, but I found these skinless ones. So the skin in the recipe is just for a little crunch element that you put in on the top. So I bought some legs and thighs with the skin on, and I'm just gonna be using that skin for this crunchy skin element. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and get the skin removed, and then we'll come back. Got my skin separated from one of the legs there. I'm just gonna lay this out as flat as I can. I'm just gonna hit it with a tiny bit of salt. I'm gonna fold that over, just like that. And then we're gonna put another tray on top of it. Now, as you can see here, here's my other thigh. And with this leg and thigh, I've just put some salt on it and I'm gonna bake this because my son, he won't eat the one with all the other spices and that on it. So I'm just gonna cook this along with it. And I'm just gonna put this into a preheated 180 degree oven for about 30 minutes until the skin underneath is nice and crispy. And we'll just leave that one in there until it's cooked all the way through. Now with the other thigh that I took, removed the skin from, I just cut the thigh from the leg and I'm gonna be poaching that along with the chicken breast once it comes time. Cause it all gets shredded up and I think a little bit of the dark meat in with this will go really, really well. Okay, for the poaching liquid to a pot, I'm gonna add the Chinese cooking wine. I'm gonna add the mirin. I'm gonna add the water, add the ginger. When I went to the store, I forgot to get the rock sugar. So I'm gonna use palm sugar instead. I'm just gonna bang all that in there. And now we're just gonna bring that to a boil. Give a little stir over down again and wait till the sugar all dissolves and then we'll add the chicken. Now, my liquid isn't quite to a boil yet, but I'm gonna be adding the, the thigh. I'm adding them first before it becomes to a boil so they actually get a head start on cooking because they take a little longer to cook than the breast will. So I'll put them on now and then once we get it up to a boil, we'll add the chicken breast. Okay, I got my poaching liquid to a boil. Now I'm just gonna add the chicken breast and I'm gonna cover that with a lid. And now we're gonna take this off the heat and set it aside for 20 minutes to let the chicken breast poach. My skin's all nice and done and crispy. Now, for the last little bit, I took it out of the baking paper that I had it sandwiched between this and that, and then I just put it on this rack and put it up really high, close to my element in my oven, just to get it that final little bit of crispiness. It's still a little bit soft here, but as this cools down, this will all harden into nice, crunchy little chicken skin. And also, I tempt this, this is leg and thighs also finished, so we'll, uh, yeah, we'll let this cool down and then we'll break it up into shards once it's cool. My chicken's been poached away for 20 minutes. Now I'm just gonna remove them all into the bowl on the side. Splash it all over your counter as you do it. It's exactly what you wanna be doing. Now we're just gonna let these cool down until we shred them. And we're gonna set this aside and then we'll be uh, making up a nice broth with, this, with the rest of this braising liquid later on. I've just brought some of my poaching liquid up to a simmer. Now I'm gonna add in chilies and the ginger. Now my bird's eye chilies, the ones I had were dry and they weren't very spicy. So I just added in another chili that was spicy to bring up that uh, nice heat level that this dish needs. Okay, I'm gonna return that to the stove and just let it simmer for about 20 minutes. I've had my broth simmer away here for about 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna add some palm sugar. I'm gonna add some rice wine vinegar and a good pinch of salt. Now we're just gonna give this a little stir. Make sure the uh, sugar and the salt's all dissolved, and then we'll taste it and see if we need to add anything. Okay, so I gave it a little bit of a taste. I'm just gonna add a little bit more vinegar, then we'll stir that in, and then we'll strain this, and we'll set it aside and keep it warm. Once your chicken's cooled down, 
I've just got a little bit of the poaching broth in the bottom there. Now I'm just going to shred the chicken. Obviously you could do this in a big pan with two forks and you know shred them apart like that but I find doing it by hand you're gonna especially if you got bones in like I do and little bits that you don't want to chew on like you know that tendon you don't want to be eating that. It's easier to find it all by hand and yeah so I'm just gonna go through get all this shredded up into nice pieces and then we'll come back. So I was at the store and I also couldn't find any dried shrimp so I got these dried anchovies instead had them kicking around the fridge so I thought I'd use them as well but I also have some uh, shrimp paste here so we'll just bung a bit of that in as well and we're going to lightly grind this up until it's a nice little paste you don't have to go too heavy on this just make it a coarse one and we'll just get those anchovies and shrimp paste mixed in together All right, that looks about good there's still some whole ones in there okay once you got your shrimp paste and your little fish all mixed up there just going to add a few cherry tomatoes you're just gonna bruise them lightly with the pestle. All right, now we'll transfer this to a bowl and we'll add the other ingredients. Now I've got uh, my green beans and I didn't have any bird eyed chili, so I just sliced up a little bit of, uh, you know, one of those normal red chilies. So we'll plonk them in. And also, I'm not exactly sure what they meant by green mango that's shredded. So I just got a normal mango that I could find at the shop and cut it into little matchsticks. And then all the herbs, I got mint, coriander and dill that I just picked all the leaves and then just roughly chopped it. So they all go in and now we'll get this roughly combined and then we'll add the dressing. I've got my palm sugar in my mortar and pestle. Now I've just got some fish sauce and lime juice. I'm going to dip in there and I'm going to lightly stir this together, get it all nice and dissolved and then we'll, uh, then we'll taste and adjust if needed. Okay, I've got it all mixed up and I gave it a little taste. And I'm going to add just a pinch of salt in there. So once we get all this salt uh, dissolved in there, we'll, uh, we'll carry on with the next step. Alright, once you've got it roughly mixed up, got the dressing here that we just made up. I'm going to add about that much of it. Then we'll uh, give it a mix. And then we'll give it a taste and see if it needs uh, something more or, you know, we'll adjust from there. After mixing it all up, I like where that's at. I've got a little bit of dressing left, but uh, I don't think it needs any more. Oh, maybe we'll just dip a little bit more in. Just for the hell of it. And then, uh, yeah, now we're ready to plate up. So, crunchy chicken skin. I mean, if it's on top of the dish, it's always a good start. I'm not used to using shrimp paste and all this type of thing in my cooking. So it's a bit polarizing when I'm putting it in there. I'm very unsure of how much to put in and all that sort of thing, but let's just go see how we go. Mm, mm, mm. That salad with the chicken and the broth, the broth is quite chilly forward, but I like that a lot. I would think when I was tasting the dressing for the, for the salad, it was quite fishy, I would say, and shrimp paste forward, but when everything is mixed together, this is unbelievably good. It's such an umami bomb, and then you have that nice heat from the chili coming through. This is definitely one dish that I'll be making again, and I'll try to source the correct ingredients for everything.